2022 is in the books officially and realistically. Even though most of us turned the, the page in January, things aren't officially done until winter workouts start for the next year, and that started this week. So while we've had some look backs, we are now officially diving headfirst into 2023. Who needs to have a good winter workout season? We'll give you the top five from Ryan Snyder and myself coming up on the BWI Daily Edition. Ryan is back and better than ever on Friday. Ryan, how you feeling? I know you were on the uh, injury report early in the week, so we want to get an updated <laughs> status. Can you can you comment first off? Are you allowed to comment on your injury report? You guys, you didn't. You, you and Sean didn't tell everybody I broke my back. <laughs> no, I figured no, you guys I, told everybody. <laughs> I didn't listen the other day. I, nah, so I try I, hard not to give away too many personal details of other people <laughs> on the show unless they want them to. <laughs> You feel feel free to if you want to, but no, we didn't. I'm talk fine about that now. Monday. No, I don't know what the hell I did over the weekend. I don't know what I did. I picked up my kid, and I didn't get out of bed for the next 36 hours. So sorry for missing the Monday pod, but I wasn't going anywhere until I saw a doctor. Uh, and and just the way we time it, it didn't really work too well for that. But we're fine now. I don't know. I'm 34. I felt like I was 65 the other day. So um, doing better now, though. That's all that matters. But yeah, just. Playing with your uh, toddlers, man. I don't know what happened, but it wasn't very fun. Well, uh, nobody's picking up anything today. We are going to be firmly sitting down for the top five list. thought this would be a fun way to end the week. I I've enjoyed doing our five prospects to watch, and uh, I want to get some more mileage out of the graphics I built, so we're doing a top five list on Friday. Top five players that need a strong winter workout season. Ryan's got his list, and that's the, the list for the show. But because I'm obnoxious and can't keep my opinions to myself, I'll also have my own top five. But that'll be kind of like a side top five. Before we get in the video, we are less than 50 people away from 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you want to make it a Valentine's Day present for me, which is coming up next week, let's get there. Actually, four days from now. Let's, uh, let's get there before then. Appreciate everyone who supports the show. Very excited to reach this milestone, even if it's like the marathon and the guy coming across the finish line at hour nine or something like that. Cross it. You, you accomplished your goal. Like this video. That helps let other people know about Blue White Illustrated. And, of course, if you're listening on our uh, audio version on the podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, please download and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, if you leave a five-star review uh, and your question, we'll get that question on the weekly mailbag show. So now that I've got all of that stuff out of the way and people have uh, skipped ahead 30 seconds, Ryan, are you ready to get started? You said it, not me. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. We're coming in at number five. Players that need to have a good winter workout season, according to Ryan Snyder. Number five. All right, I mean, so where we when, I, when I was putting this together, I mean, to me, winter workouts are what they are, right? I mean, to me, it's kind of spring in general. You know, like, obviously, I'm kind of including spring ball with a lot of these guys as well. Uh I'll start with I'll start with Zariah Fisher because I feel like that's an easy one. Uh, to to me, you know, Zariah miss obviously misses almost all of last year. I think he played in what two games? I think it was. I think he totaled I don't know somewhere around fifteen snaps. I think it was. It was a very small amount. Of course, he's coming off yeah. an injury, but I, I just look at the room. You know, when I look at Adisa and I look at Chop. And I look at Deny, I think those three are getting a lot of publicity. But I also think it's important to remember, I mean, Van Over had a pretty good year last year, too. I mean, he had 16-plus pressures, 13 tackles, a sack. Um, you know, Amin, yeah. I think Amin played better than what most people give him credit for or realize. So just when I look at that room, I look at Zariah coming back, uh, you know, the, the winter workouts and in the spring ball, you know, if he wants to be in that, that rotation, which they can, ro they'll rotate five guys. Don't get me wrong. And, and Zariah yeah. will be part of that. Uh, but, but he's a guy who two years ago before the injury, we were thinking, okay, you know, this is, this is a player who uh, could potentially be, I don't want to say in chops role right now, but you know, get it, getting um, a more solid playing time. To, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Someone playing 300, 400 snaps. Uh, it feels like he's just kind of starting 
over again. Maybe that's that's probably not fair to say, but uh, it, from the public eye, I feel like that's the perspective. So, uh, just Uriah Fisher, man, getting back out there. He's already, you know, he's he's obviously cleared. He played. Uh, but taking it to another level, you know, showing, um, you know, that, that he's ready to contribute this year uh, in winter workouts and in the spring. I think Zariah is a, a good place to start. Yeah, it was interesting talking to Nye Dennis Sutton on Tuesday about like that room and how much they push each other. And he's like, yeah, you, you don't just get snaps if you just because you're there. You've got to earn them. And, and the talent at that room is so deep. Legitimately four players, if you include Denai Dennis Sutton and then uh, Zariah Fisher, that fifth guy in terms of players that have, have taken snaps. And you're right about Amin Vanover. Um, I did a similar analysis kind of looking at his numbers. And if you go by per snap, he was probably the second most impactful player that made legitimately impact plays, tackles for loss, stops, sacks, things like that. And, and if you look at the number of snaps he had, he absolutely was as disruptive as he seems when he would just flash all the time. So mm -hmm. getting into that rotation, if that's your third or fourth guy, that's a, that's a great rotation. For me, I'm starting at number five. I'm going Trey – of course I'm starting at number five. I'm going Trey Wallace at number five because another thing we learned on Tuesday, Malik McLean, impressive early. And if I'm just looking at the spring roster, there's snaps to go around. But when you add in Dante Cephas when he gets here in the spring, that Z position, if that's where McLean or Cephas play, Trey Wallace has to once again earn snaps with a new position coach, and he has to not fall behind these guys. So I think it starts with winter workouts, making sure you're as big and fast and strong as possible, and then applying that, as you mentioned, kind of looking forward into the spring. Being in that competition, being in that conversation – that's uh, you could put that for any of the receivers, but for him, he was a part of the conversation last year. He was on the field. You don't want to take a step back and then kind of fall off. That's that's not a great place to be. You're number four. Who do you got? Mm -hmm. Give me the graphic. Come on. Number four. <laughs> uh, I'm going with Zane Durant uh, for this one. Defensive tackle. Look, Zane, Zane graded out really well. Uh, at the end of last season. And, and yep. overall, I mean, I, th I still think he had like a mid-70s or something like that for PFF. But like the end of the year, uh, he really took things to a different level. Now, uh, granted, the teams were also a little bit uh, not, not quite the stature of Ohio State and Michigan and Auburn yeah. and some of those other teams at the beginning of the year. Uh, but against Minnesota, for example, uh, mid-70s grade. Uh, Indiana, I think, was his best game of the year, uh, right right below 80. Uh, played well in Maryland, Rutgers as well. He totaled 11 total pressures, uh, eight quarterback hurries. But the main thing is, is like, P.J. Mustafer's gone. And P.J., as great of a leader he was and all those things, uh, he's a great player. I don't want to make it – I don't want to talk down on P.J., but, like, uh, PJ didn't have quite the impact on the field that I thought yeah. maybe he would going yep. into the year. Um, and they just, but it, you can say that case for a lot of these guys. You can say the case yep. for I think Hakeem probably had the best year of them. Maybe um, if you look at some stats, I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. I'm wrong on that one. But he was just but, very inconsistent. It was it was higher highs and lower lows was his problem. Mm -hmm. He would like the Michigan game. We talk about players that got beat up. Most of them didn't, and a couple did. And one guy that. Kind of got his beat up if the, you want to if you want to talk about physically dominated. Beeman was one of those guys, and, and mm -hmm. there were moments where he was out of his gap. He made me me mental mistakes. So yeah, I, I would say that he did flash the best, but kind of graded out where everyone else did because those those mental mistakes brought everything kind of down to an average. But to, to me, Zane Durant is the best pure as far as the highest ceiling. I, I would in that defensive tackle room. I think you have to go with Zane Durant and what you saw this year. So. Uh, you know, just taking it uh, to a different level um, as far as winter workouts go. Was to, I can't remember. I think I think Zane was an early enrollee. Yeah, Abdul Carter yes. wasn't, and Deny weren't. Yeah, Zane was an early enrollee, so he yes. got the experience this last year, and I'm sure that played a role uh, in him getting getting onto the field. But uh, Zane Durant is is the guy who at the at the is the guy who has the most potential at the position that I think. Outside of obviously Drew Aller and, and what he becomes is probably most important for Penn State in 2024 if they want to reach their potential. I think just when you look at the defense overall, you, you know where you're at defense uh, with defensive backs, linebacker, your edge room is incredible. It's that interior again. Is Penn State yep. going to be able to shut teams down in the run game? Uh, that's when you go against Michigan and Ohio State next year, it's going to come down to that once again, I believe. So Zane Durant taking it to the next level, uh, I think that'll have a big role in, in Penn State reaching the goals that I think the fans are uh, 
getting excited about uh, or predicting in 2023. Uh, so he arrived on campus. I want to remember this correctly. It was either 260 or 265 was where he was. We had him at 250 uh, as a prospect, so he gained some weight before he got on campus, but now he's 276. I guess what I'm trying to illustrate is there was a dramatic change in his body shape over last year, and you can see it in photos. You can see it the way he looks. Do you think, and I've been thinking about this, and I haven't wanted to say it out loud, but at this point, he's 276. Maybe he gets up to 280, uh, 285 this offseason right now in, in the winter workouts. Can, can he be one of those guys that takes on double teams, do you think? Because he's... He's squatty. strong as an ox. Exactly. Exactly. You're not just looking for size. What you're yes. looking for is the ability to defeat double teams. Do you think yes. he could be that guy for them? Yes. Yes. I mean, that was the one thing that I consistently heard as far as him as a prospect. Now, obviously, I haven't talked to a ton of people over the last year because uh, obviously I focus on recruiting, right? So when I do talk to people, I'm talking about the recruits. But when he was coming up through, just the, the thing that everybody kept harping on is, you know, strong as an ox, strong as an ox. I think I, I had three different people say strong as an ox to me. So that's yeah. what I always now just repeat. But but yeah, I mean, they, they just feel like he is that that little ball of uh, power, ball of strength, whatever you want to put. So uh, and I don't want to say little. Little's, uh, he's just not quite as tall <laughs> as some other guys. But right, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that that's, that's certainly um, a role he's going to have to take on all these guys are uh, but just to me defensive tackle is incredibly important uh, for 2023 and Zane Durant's the one with the highest ceiling I, I hate doing this the reason I thought about it Ed Oliver a body type comparison I don't want to compare him to a top 10 pick in the NFL draft but that guy played nose tackle at Houston it's Houston and that that was not his best position but it is not crazy to say that a guy who is undersized but strong as an ox and has that body type of the mass in the right places, he might be able to do some of those things. And again, mm -hmm. I would not want to play him at nose tackle, but if he could get to a position where he can uh, provide some of those duties for Penn State, I think that's a huge benefit. I'm going on the other side of the ball, Sal Wormley. Um, I think so. My, you'll notice a trend for me on, on this list. Uh, Sal is a talented football player. He can be as good as he wants to be. But he has to be as good as he wants to be because there, there's no uh, – he's going to get pushed this year. There are talented interior offensive linemen. The tackle situation, you know, I know that we – I've been kind of saying they're going to keep all their tackles at tackle. I don't know that. You know, what if they do decide that Caden Wallace is one of their best five and they want to kick him inside if Drew Shelton earns that tackle role, like outright? There's just a lot of different places that that right guard position can go, including Vega Ioane, who I'm super high on. So Sal Wormley, it, it's go time to be a complete player, not just a promising run blocker that played really well last year. It's the, it's the full gambit. So for me, that's what's coming at number four. Um, are you ready to move on to number three? You already, you already kind of segued me to it, but yeah, go ahead. Number three. It's got to be Drew Shelton. Uh, it has to be uh, in my eyes. I mean, look, uh, let's 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 just look over some numbers real quick. Total three hundred and seventy nine snaps last year. Uh, I thought I I, I rewatched I think three or four of his games. I didn't watch all of them, but I rewatched a couple. Of them. I thought as a pass protector, he did a pretty good job. It was really more so as a run blocker uh, where yeah. where he could could improve. Uh, in the Rose Bowl, it was it was kind of the opposite. Then it was he. I thought he struggled as a pass protector and, and did a little bit of a job as a run blocker. But uh, it really just comes down to this: that that's going to be one of the best position battles of of the year. Uh, Caden Wallace, Drew Shelton, who gets that right tackle spot? I mean, to me, from what I, I think most fans think that that Drew Shelton will win that job. Uh, but he's got to go out and prove it. And this is this is going to be his opportunity to, to take his game to a different level. So uh, I, I really like Drew Shelton's potential. I, I'll be honest. I mean, when Drew was coming out, I'm not going to say I wasn't high on everybody else. He was a, he deserved to be a four-star. Um, but I just had a few more questions. And he's totally yeah. – uh, I, I was wrong on that one. You know, there was a few other guys where I thought, you know – like I, I, You weren't the I only think one, he's by better. the way. You weren't yeah. the only one. He flipped his – what you just that. said earlier is he flipped his profile from high school where he came in as a dominant run blocker, but he performed better as a pass protector uh, during the season. I think you, you nailed mm -hmm. that part, and that's I agree with you there. Man, when I saw Drew, I don't know, 
but it was in June or July after spending a few months on campus, and I was so impressed with just how quickly some things changed with him physically. I got to give him and obviously the strength staff a ton of credit because I remember being there. Uh, I think it was with Fitz at uh, at one of the seven on seven tournaments, and oh, we yeah. were we didn't even watch the seven on seven. We're like, dude, are you seeing Drew right now? Like, oh my god, he's only been here a couple months. So, uh, but yeah, just just Drew Shelton, man, uh, incredible potential there. Can he beat out Caden Wallace for that right tackle spot? I think he can. I think a lot of fans think he can, uh, but this is this is this is his moment to start to start proving that. I, I got to give you credit. I uh, showed up at the camps at Penn State because y- you asked me to be there, and uh, I learned a lot at those camps in the summer. And one of the things don't I worry, learned... buddy, you'll be coming back again this year. <laughs> Standard, I bought a second battery for my camera, so I will have even more pictures and footage for you. But one of the things I, I we had a similar experience. I, I saw drew shelton working with some of the tackles right and he was showing a pass blocking set and he sank down into his set and like just his lower body i was like oh that's how it's supposed to look holy cow that is not what i saw on on film as a uh, as a as a as a senior in high school so that transformation i think surprised everybody the it was mostly mental in the run game and that's why i think you saw that flip in the rose bowl where he was making some mental mistakes earlier in the year and run blocking. I don't think people understand how intricate and complicated it is. Like it's not just smoosh the guy in front of you. You've got to have the right steps. You got to make sure you're coming with the right foot forward. You've got to have your aiming point. You've got to be able to hit your aiming point and then have the feel to either take that block fully from your, the guy you're double teaming with or launch to the second level and hit your target and know where it is. So he was just struggling with, okay, you didn't hold that long enough. That's a feel thing. And then he didn't get to the second level sometimes to then pick up his linebacker because he either looked the wrong way or he just missed the target. So these are mental things that he's physically capable of doing. From a pass protection standpoint, I thought that's where Clifford and the offense, his bad mistakes never really killed the offense. And so you never really noticed them. But he was absolutely... Um, way better than I expected in those situations. I'm going with the guy we already talked about, and that's Akeem Beeman. Uh, he's 264 pounds. He and uh, Smith, uh, 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 me and Vanover, are the same football player. And James Franklin's edict, I wish we could get bigger. Like, it's, what are we getting this offseason from, from Hakeem? We've seen him get up to 280. We've seen him be down at 260. So... Where does the yo-yo land this year? What is the decision about what he's going to be? Because you do have Zane Durant and Kaziah Izzard. There are other players at that position um, who are talented. And I'm not saying that they're either going to overtake him for the starting role, but we've seen players that technically start. And, you know, if he doesn't want to be a guy that technically starts, he's got to be in the weight room and he's got to be... I think he's got to be getting bigger. I I just... I think he's got to be getting bigger. Let's go to number two. Number two. Keandre Lambert Smith, man. I think it's uh, uh, these last two are really easy. And if people don't know who I'm picking for the first one, then I, I don't know what to tell you guys. But uh, total 389 yards receiving, four touchdowns last year. Good stats. 124 of those came in the Rose Bowl, 83 uh, of those yards. Uh, came against Michigan State. So two games made up the vast uh, majority of his production. He had uh, a touchdown in each of those games as well. Just how does he handle Malik McLean coming in? How does he handle Dante Cephas coming in? The one thing Keandre made it very clear to all of us in out in California was that he did not like that we were not giving him the credit uh, of being a true number one receiver. And, and hey, man, he he... Made sure we all shut up in that Rose Bowl, uh, you know, questioning whether he could be that number one guy. So I, I, I do think he has every right to to consider that as himself. I'm just very curious to see uh, how Malik McLean comes in and, and pushes him this year. But uh, Keandre Lambert Smith has all the potential in the world. I mean, no, there's no doubting that. There's always just been uh, a few mental mistakes here and there. So obviously that stuff gets worked out more in spring ball. He certainly can add some more size and different things like that. Certainly yep. from a strength perspective, he can improve. And that that's that's where the winter workouts come in. But to me, uh, Keandre Lambert Smith is one of the most interesting players uh, to watch between now and, and now in the start of the season because there's there's a load of potential there. He's just always come up a little bit short from reaching that full potential. But the last two games we saw him play, and you know, without Parker out there and some other things, yeah. uh, boy, uh, looked pretty damn good. Yeah, and and kind of moving into a different role because of that. 
and being able to then that part of his part of the conversation with Keandre has also been opportunity where there are times he got more opportunities early in the year and then the injury is is a part of this story but then the targets dried up so Mm -hmm. if you're not 100 percent on your three targets you drop one you're not open um or something happens on one of the other ones then you go one for three and it look you know it looks and feels like you're not a consistent football player and that may be true but it also is a part of the conversation of opportunity a game against Rutgers he did not have a good game the then he bounced back and had two monumental games also a lot of that production came in the third quarter and then the fourth quarter against Michigan State so it was kind of like at the very last minute, it's six quarters we're talking about with Keandre Lambert-Smith. So I agree with you. There's still a lot of prove it left for him. To me, coming in at number two is Adisa Isaac. Now, unlike some of the other guys on this uh, list, it's not necessarily about um, you know the, the competition around him. We did talk about the depth and talent of that group. Isaac's going to be the starter. But it's another year away from that injury. And can he regain that, that high-end elite explosiveness you do that in the gym you do that building your body and getting stronger getting more explosive refining your your lower body you know and getting up to 250 pounds he he's always been around 240 can he get up to 250 and have it be a natural good weight for him all of those things will make him more explosive and then it you know this is kind of the institutional situation of penn state needs him to have a, a really good off season because they can have the most explosive dynamic and threatening pass rush in America if you've got those four guys and uh, Isaac gets back to where he was. So that's my number two. Are you re- Do you have anything else you want to talk about uh, five through two on either list before we get to number no, one? No, I mean, I think it's all pretty... I mean, I, I think all those guys make a lot of sense, right? So I, I don't think there's much to add uh, that you haven't said. Number one. Oh, Long snap. No, I'm not Fitz. If Sean was here, he would pick that. I would throw it to you. I, I, can I throw it to you? Who who would be your who's your guy for this one? If you don't mind, um, I I kind of I wimped out and I went. If you want to throw Tyler it back Elsden. to me, you can. No, oh, you want no, Tyler no, no. Elsden? Okay, I, I went Tyler Elsden. Um, you know, my list is very much personal. Like these individual players, either for their career or for their snap count need to be good in the weight room and then translate that to the spring. So I'm kind of starting from personal positional and then developmental growth. And for Tyler Mm -hmm. Elsden, uh, I think it's, it's all three. And then, you know, kind of like I was saying earlier, kind of an institutional view who need, who does Penn state need to have a good spring practice? Uh, It doesn't have to be Tyler Elsden for Penn state, but they need a middle linebacker to take that next step and play above average football, not play acceptable, be in the right spot and miss some, but make some, you need to be making most of them and then make a couple good plays. That's where they need to have Tyler Elsden or Kobe King. But for Elsden, the, the physical side of it, he's always been quick. He's always been explosive in short areas, but the tightness, the mobility, the sideline to sideline range, and obviously in coverage, those have been the issues. And the margin for error, this is how I've described his season, in position, you you overrun it a little bit. Like, you're just not perfectly in the gap. He doesn't have the arm length to reach back and make the tackle. He's got to be, that means if he's going to be in position at all times, he has to be quicker, more explosive, stronger. All those things happen right now. So that's why I'm putting him number one as a guy who you have to have answers at every position for the Penn State to uh, go to where they want to this next season. And middle linebacker is a place where you have a question. Do you have an answer there? It doesn't have to be an elite player, but do you have an answer of good play? For Tyler Elsden, this is the year and this is the time where it has to happen. Well said. No, I, I, that's, a, that's a good one. I mean, Drew, Drew Aller is the easy pick for, for yeah. me, guys. Uh, it's all about becoming the leader of this team. The other day, we, we got the opportunity to speak with all the, all the freshmen, or first-year players, I should say. They're about to be sophomores, obviously. But, uh, you know, Zane Durant was asked to, to name all the guys. And, you know, he, named, he said Nick Singleton's a great leader. 
and basically just said that Drew's a leader. He just doesn't know it yet. And, you know, asked to follow up on it. He, he just kind of hit on all the things you need to know. I mean, he's, he's the quarterback of this team. He was behind Sean, you know, so he had the great leadership as an example. Uh, it's just now his opportunity um, to, to show the team that and, and take it to the next level. So for me, it's really this winter workout isn't isn't about physical for Drew Aller from a size perspective. I mean, he's got a heck of an arm. And there's not there's certainly things he can improve on physically. Obviously, if he's going to play 600 plus snaps in the Big Ten next year, probably even more than that. But uh, to, to me, it's it's leadership. And, and that's James hit it on Tuesday. Yep. Did, was it Tuesday? Yeah, James hit that yes. on that Tuesday about how you know, this was one of the best leadership groups that he thought he had this past season uh and now that's kind of starting from scratch with the vast majority of those guys those guys gone so uh drew's only a sophomore uh just about everybody we've ever talked to though whether he's a senior uh on down to the freshman uh, have, have a ton of respect for him and the way he carries himself uh, on and off the field so this is this is drew aller's team now and, and this is his opportunity uh to make sure everybody knows it yeah, and if you want to check out his full comments from Tuesday, uh, check out the other video, Blue White Illustrated, here on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, um, you know, just click over to the video. We're almost wrapped up here, so you know, watch the end because I, I got some more things to say. But you can check out his comments. One of the things he said, actually, and you bring up a really good point, is that um, he wants to get bigger and stronger. Um, he talked about his diet was not great his first uh, half year on campus. And uh, the nutrition staff helped him out with that a lot. He talked about not being an experienced weightlifter. So this winter workout season, putting in the time to be a better, stronger athlete. So I, I think you even hit on that where he can take some physical steps. They're not going to be as important as the mm -hmm. mental and leadership steps. But yeah, it's a big spring for him all around because there's there's a lot of growth potential for a guy who was a five star. And that's I think that's an exciting place to be where you you have a guy who is self aware, knows that he needs to improve and is has a specific checklist, he told me each day of the things he's going to improve or the things he's, he's working on. So a positive, at least, outlook on, on number one for Penn State football. Uh, anything else, Ryan? you have anything from Tuesday that you had left over that you've been thinking about? Uh, Drew Aller and I were similar as far as having terrible diets our freshman year. That's what I took away from that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. Um, you know, leftovers from Tuesday. I uh, was really impressed with Marcus Higgins. Uh, I thought he gave some great answers uh, talking about uh, I was really, uh, I think, kind of touching the room, talking about his wife with breast cancer and some things we didn't know about him. Of course, we already knew his middle, his son's middle name was Dex. We talked about that on the board. I think BWI subscribers uh, knew that situation. But obviously, uh, Point Dexter and some things, that stood out to me. Uh, just talking to the young guys, man, that was really fun. Uh, for me specifically, obviously, I talked to these guys for two-plus years. And then as soon as they get on campus, I'm not allowed to talk to anybody. So it's really fun catching up with Deny Dennis Sutton, Deny with somebody yeah. that uh, I went and saw many times, went to San Antonio down there to see him. Uh, you 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 caught up with Drew. Uh, Nick's Nick's never much of a talker, so I didn't I didn't I didn't see Drew and Nick's. Uh, yeah. Everybody's always surrounding Nick, but Nick's in Nick's. Nick. I avoided he's, he's Abdul not much for that. I avoided Abdul. Abdul knew like he doesn't want to talk to anybody, so no. I, I don't I won't bother him. Katron <laughs> definitely does not want to talk to anybody either. Uh, Katron's uh, yeah, it, it's funny. I mean, Katron. I don't think I ever interviewed Katron as a recruit like ever. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, getting to just kind of see him how he handles the media, which he's not. He's not bad or anything you can just tell he's just that's not him and that's fine yeah. there's a lot of nfl players who uh are, are the same way but I, I i was really fun tuesday to to get to catch up with those guys except like i said i that built relationships with them and their family for so long so to get to see them and chat for 30 minutes is uh always a good time i, I one of the answers that we were both with denied Dennis sudden for a little bit talking to him and i thought one of his answers was really smart and in, in a growth sense where he said, um, I used to think like if you weren't sore, you weren't just going mm -hmm. hard in the gym, you weren't doing enough. And he talked about how he he learned from veterans, hey, rest is just as important to make sure your body can recover. And like it's f you, you mentioned how you and Drew had the same diet coming in. <laughs> you ever have those not, moments where like 10 minutes it, like like 10 minutes after you leave you're like oh that was the dumbest thing i said today i i really wish that hadn't happened <laughs> i looked at him like you and i have the same mentality in the gym and it just had the opposite oh effect. yes and i i, was, I, I was at home later cooking dinner and i thought to myself t frank nobody cares <laughs> Nobody cares. Why did you say that? Why would you why would you interrupt everyone's question flow for you to make a joke that no one cared about? So I am here to publicly apologize to all those involved for that. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for the Daily Edition. This is a fun show.
Friday, baby. Everybody enjoy their weekend. Super Bowl. Oh, who's your pick? Oh, I actually forgot. Like, I've been boycotting the NFL in my mind for no reason whatsoever. <sighs> Gee, I um, wonder why. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I can't bet against Patrick Mahomes. The Eagles are the better team. I think they should win. But I've learned all these years watching great quarterbacks, watching Tom Brady for 20 years destroy my hopes and dreams. Patrick Mahomes the, it has the same qualities, that he'll just destroy your hopes and dreams whether or not he has the better team. So I think Jalen Hurts is a great quarterback. I think they have a better offense and a better team overall. But... Patrick Mahomes. So I'm going with the, I'm going with the Chiefs. You okay. going with hometown I, so, birds? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I I, I like I like the birds, but I mean, I, I will say uh, the public is very heavy on the birds. And yeah. who's the better, more experienced coach? Andy yeah. Reid to this Reed. point. I mean, Sirianni has proven a lot, but uh, you know, so so I, whenever the public's all on one team, that's usually not a good sign. And then I, I would still have to lead uh, lean towards Big Red. Uh, as a better coach there so we'll see I just hope this is a great game man like I've obviously Super Bowl is fun every year we're always excited about it but I can't remember the last time I was excited for a Super Bowl the way I'm excited for for this one so I hope everybody enjoys it on Sunday don't uh, drink too much remember you have to work on Monday Uh, and if you don't hear from me or Greg uh, by 10 o'clock 11 o'clock on Monday it's because we did just that so I used hold on the fort T Frank I used to take Monday off from the Super Bowl because I was on morning radio at the time, and I just was absolutely not going to miss the Super Bowl. So <laughs> it was like my national holiday was Monday after the Super Bowl. You just never saw me. Shout out, by the way, to uh, Nick Sirianni is the head coach, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Jamestown, New York. He is from that area, and I grew up just south in Pennsylvania from that area. Uh. I believe his cousins or some relative went to my high school. So like they were my brother's age, small world, small world, right? Like (laughs) to the Kevin Bacon game. I'm like one step away from Kevin Bacon, which is a Super Bowl uh, uh, coach. I almost said quarterback. He's a, he's a coach in the Super Bowl. All right. I'm petering out. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. (laughs) I'm petering out here. We're going to get going on the BWI daily edition. We will be back on Monday with the recruiting show and the live show on Tuesday. We're working on some fun stuff. We'll let you know what's coming up next week. BWI Daily Edition. We'll talk to you then.